Today we are going to have a look at Hyena Day, a family of mammals more commonly known as the hyenas. Hyenas are mammals in the order Carnivora, which, as the name suggests, contains many of the mammalian carnivores, such as cats, dogs, bears, raccoons, otters, weasels, and seals, among others. Carnivora is divided into two suborders, Feliformia, or the cat-like carnivores, and Caniformia, or the dog-like carnivores. There has always been debate as to whether hyenas are more closely related to cats or dogs. They look very dog-like with the elongated muzzles, stocky build, and claws that don't retract. As with many arguments like this, genetics has really helped to provide a conclusive answer, and it turns out that they are actually on the cat side of carnivora. So let's have a quick look at the different families in Feliformia before we focus in on the hyenas. The phylogeny of living Feliform starts with the African palm civet. This is the only living member of its family, Nandinidae. From there, the suborder divides into two diverging branches, along one is Felidae, or the cats, and Prionodontidae, or the Asiatic linsangs. Most people are very familiar with the cats, which includes the domestic ones alongside lions, tigers, and many other species of felid. The Asiatic linsangs are less well known, but they are a family that contains only two living species. These are arboreal cat-like carnivores from Southeast Asia. Down the other branch of Phalliformia, the first family is Viveridae. This is a fairly large family with 33 species across 14 genera. It includes the civets, genets and the binturong. They are typically medium-sized arboreal predators and are distinguished by notably long muzzle giving the heads a very slender or angular appearance. The next family is the hyenas which will be the focus of this video. The closest living relatives to the hyena is Herpestidae or the mongooses and Eupleridae or the Malagasy mongooses. While not exactly what I would expect the closest relatives to hyenas to be, both families are comprised of small but fierce predators found throughout Africa and in southern Asia and Europe. With this quick tour of Feliformia completed, let's return to the main focus of this video, Hyena Day. This family contains the four living species of hyena and their extinct relatives. The word hyena is derived from the Greek word for pig. It was possibly given this name due to its mane that looks a little like a hog's bristles. Hyenas look similar to canids like wolves, but this is due to convergent evolution. This is where animals that are not closely related look similar to each other due to a similar habitat or lifestyle. In the case of hyenas and dogs, they are both adapted for running on the ground. This contrasts with most village which typically excel at climbing trees. Three of the living hyenas are of a group known as the bone-cracking hyenas. They are predominantly scavengers and got this collective name as they have specialised teeth to crush bones. The remaining species, the aardwolf, is notably different as it is an insectivore. Modern hyenas are characterised by long forelegs and short hind legs that make their back slope noticeably downwards. Their necks are short and robust and they have short, blunt, non-retractable claws. All surviving hyenas are in different genera. I am not going to list all of the extinct hyenas in this video. As of the time of writing, there are 22 extinct genera of hyenas, with over 50 species identified between them. In addition to this, none went extinct within recent human history, so little is known about most of them. In fact, the four surviving species are the only ones known from the last 10,000 years. The rest all went extinct before that. This fossil record does give an excellent indication of how hyenas evolved from small mammals into the stocky scavengers we see today. They started out as civet or mongoose-like, with elongated bodies. These were likely omnivores, especially since many of the modern hyenas will consume fruit and insects in addition to meat. The first known hyena was Protectotherium gaillardi, which basically looked like a civet. It could retract its claws like a cat and spent most of its time in the trees. These were only identifiable as hyenas due to the bone structure of the ears and their teeth. The first known European hyena was Pleoviverops or Bignyi, which looked like a mongoose and was likely insectivorous. Its claws couldn't retract and it likely spent most of its time on the ground, both of which are features of modern hyenas. Shortly after this, hyenas started becoming much larger and evolved into the group known as cursorial or running hyenas. These were more wolf-like as they were adapted to hunting and chasing prey. Others became more similar to jackals and were scavengers. It is this last group that became the bone-cracking hyenas that we know today. Only the aardwolf remains from the earlier groups, being the most recent evolution of the insectivorous hyenas. One other extinct hyena is worth naming, and that is the giant short-faced hyena, Pachycracuta brevirostris. It is notable as the largest known hyena, weighing 110 kilograms or 240 pounds, and standing at 1 meter or 3.3 feet at the shoulder. It was a bone-cracking hyena, and its closest living relative is the spotted hyena. It was likely a scavenger like several of its modern relatives, as its large and bulky body was not built for hunting and chasing prey. 
It lived in Europe, Asia and Africa, but went extinct around 800,000 years ago, likely due to climate change, as that was around the time an ice age began. If we go to the phylogeny of living hyenas, the one most distantly related is the aardwolf. This name comes from Afrikaans, meaning earth wolf. They have many other names, including termite-eating hyena and civet hyena. Its scientific name is Proteles cristatus. The genus name comes from Latin, meaning complete in the front, referring to the five toes it has on each forefoot, as opposed to the four toes on each back foot. Its species name means provided with a comb, which relates to its mane of hair. Aardwolves are extremely unique, and not what most people think of when they think of hyenas. For a start, aardwolves are insectivores, only eating termites of the genus Trinerva termes. This specialised diet is likely the reason the aardwolf didn't go extinct with the rest of its close relatives, as it didn't need to compete with dogs for food. Aardwolves locate their prey by smelling a scent released by soldier termites. They eat them using their long, sticky tongue to lick them up off the ground. This contrasts with other insectivores like aardvarks, which feed by destroying termite mounds. A single aardwolf may consume over 2,500 termites in a single night. The aardwolf's tongue is possibly its most unusual feature, which makes sense given their diet. The tongue is long and broad and produces a lot of saliva, which makes it sticky enough for termites to stick to. It is covered in many papillae, a structure found on tongues that makes them rougher. It is also strong enough to withstand the bite of termites. Its teeth are also heavily adapted due to its diet. It has a strong jaw and canines, as you might expect with a hyena, but its other teeth are flattened pegs used for crushing insects. Aardwolves are nocturnal and stay in their burrows during the day. Aardwolves live in open, dry plains and bushland, but avoid mountainous areas. There are two distinct populations, one around southern Africa and the other around the Horn along the eastern coast of Africa. There is some argument about whether these populations represent separate subspecies or if the species is monotypic. During most of the year, aardwolves are solitary and live in shared territories with up to a dozen different dens. During the breeding season, however, aardwolves form monogamous mated pairs and defend their territory vigorously. If their territory is invaded, then they will chase the intruder up to 400 metres or to the border. They rarely catch the intruder, but if they do, then a fight will ensue. When food is scarce, this stringent territory system is abandoned, and as many as three pairs will inhabit a single territory. An aardwolf pair will have up to 10 dens in their territory, as well as places they designate as middens to defecate. They will then bury their waste at these middens. The timing of the breeding season will vary depending on their locality, but is usually in the autumn or the spring. Although they are typically monogamous, more dominant males will mate opportunistically with unpaired females, or those of less dominant males. Females usually produce two or three cubs at a time, but can have as many as five. This birth is timed so that it coincides with the rainy season when termites are most plentiful. The young are born with their eyes open, but are still helpless. They spend the first six to eight weeks in the den with their parents. The male will watch over the cubs for up to six hours at night while the female searches for food. After three months, the cubs begin to forage for their own food, supervised by their parents. After about four months, the cubs are fully independent. Aardwolves become sexually mature at one and a half to two years of age. Aardwolves are not fast runners, nor adept at fighting off predators. When threatened, they may attempt to mislead or confuse their pursuer by doubling back on their tracks. If confronted, they will raise their mane to make themselves seem larger and therefore appear more threatening. They can also emit a foul-smelling liquid from their anal glands to deter predators. The IUCN lists the aardwolf as least concern, as they are common throughout their range, with an average density of one per kilometre if food is plentiful. They experience less persecution from humans than other hyenas, as they are not known to attack humans or livestock, and will kill termites, which is beneficial to farmers. They are still occasionally hunted for their fur or killed by insecticides. The oldest aardwolf in captivity lived to just under 19 years old, but their life expectancy in the wild is unknown. Due to their highly specialised diet, it is difficult to keep aardwolves in captivity, but it can be done. There is little reason to import aardwolves outside of their natural range, however, as they are not a species that currently needs conservation and breeding efforts to survive. Returning to the Hyenidae phylogeny, the next species is the spotted hyena, or Crocuta crocuta. This is possibly the most common and well-known of the hyena species. Its scientific name is derived from Greek and Sanskrit, and was originally used to refer to the golden jackal. There are many other references in classical antiquity equating hyenas to canids, and they were often referred to as wolves or tiger wolves. The spotted hyena has a strong neck and forequarters, but relatively underdeveloped hindquarters. This gives their rump a rounded appearance, which helps to prevent attackers from getting a good grip on them. They have a broad head with a blunt muzzle, and notably their ears are small and round. This is a good characteristic to distinguish them from the similar looking striped hyena, which has larger and pointed ears. 
The size of their territories is highly variable, ranging from less than 40 km squared to more than 1,000 km squared, depending on the area. These are defended through vocal displays, scent marking and boundary patrols. Spotted hyenas live in a wide variety of habitats. They are found in savannas, semi-deserts, open woodland and mountainous forests up to 4,000 metres above sea level. They are common throughout sub-Saharan Africa from Ethiopia and Kenya all the way to South Africa. Its distribution is a little patchy and is largest in protected areas. The spotted hyena is sometimes known as the laughing hyena due to its vocalisations. While it can make many different grunts, growls and yells, its most distinctive sound resembles maniacal laughter. This call is known as giggling and sounds like this. It has another distinctive call known as whooping, which sounds like this. These vocalisations help a lot with socialising, and spotted hyenas often considered the most social of all carnivores. This is due to their large clan size, which can have up to 80 members, and their complex social behaviours. Despite living in such large social groups, spotted hyenas don't typically work together. Instead, they will compete against each other for access to resources like food and mates. Females provide only for their own cubs instead of assisting each other, and males show no parental care. Spotted hyenas are matriarchal, with the females typically larger and more dominant than the males. Occasionally, a male will co-dominate with a female, leading the clan more as an alpha pair, but this is not the typical social structure. Cubs usually rank directly below their mothers at birth. This means that when the matriarch dies, her youngest female cub will usually take her place. It is suggested that when a male co-dominates or is the dominant individual, it is because its mother was the matriarch and died when a male was the youngest cub. This makes spotted hyenas very nepotistic. The cubs of the dominant female will rank above adults in the clan, and they will take over when their mother dies. When they are cubs, this does seem to depend on their mother being present, however, as the other adults will be more aggressive towards them when the mother is absent. Despite the lack of parental care from any except the mother, cubs are still able to recognise their close family, including their father and relatives as distant as great aunts. Males do still associate more closely with their own daughters than unrelated cubs, and females reciprocate this by being less aggressive towards their father. Perhaps it is unsurprising given their large clan size, but spotted hyenas have an enlarged frontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that regulates social behaviours. This gives them very high intelligence in certain areas. Studies have shown that spotted hyenas can outperform chimpanzees on cooperative problem-solving tests. For example, captive pairs of spotted hyenas can learn to take two ropes simultaneously to earn a reward. In addition, they learn to do this quickly with no prior training. Experienced hyenas can even help inexperienced clan mates solve problems like this, showing that they can pass knowledge on to others. Spotted hyenas have also been shown to engage in lying. For example, they have been observed giving a false alarm call when feeding to scare off other hyenas so that they can eat in peace. Mothers may also emit false alarm calls to interrupt attacks on her cubs from other hyenas. Spotted hyenas are the most carnivorous of the living hyena species. They are predators, not scavengers. They have been shown to hunt as frequently as lions. Despite this, they are still often mislabeled as scavengers, even by ecologists and scientists. This is partly due to hyenas sometimes being chased from their kills by lions and other predators. So when the researchers come along, they see the hyenas hanging around a lion feeding on a carcass, and so assume that the hyenas were waiting for the lion to leave so that they could scavenge. In reality, the lions stole the carcass from the hyenas. This mistaken belief might also be due to an old assumption, as their closest relatives, the brown and striped hyenas, are true scavengers. In prehistory, the spotted hyena could be found throughout most of Europe and parts of Asia, from the Iberian Peninsula to the Urals. It is believed that the European populations were outcompeted by wolves, leading to them disappearing between 14 to 11,000 years ago, and earlier in some areas. One extinct subspecies of spotted hyena, known as the cave hyena, was found from the Iberian Peninsula to Siberia. It went extinct following the last ice age around 20,000 years ago, but it was one of the best known ice age mammals, being often represented with bones in caves. It preyed on large mammals like wild horses and woolly rhinoceroses. It is distinctive from modern day spotted hyenas due to longer limbs and a more robust and heavier body. It was in competition with hominids for caves, but was not a major threat to them like cave bears or lions. It was not hunted by them for food, and it was not as impressive as woolly mammoths or rhinoceroses. As such, it is not widely represented in cave art. The next species in the phylogeny is the brown hyena, Parahyena brunea, also known as the strand wolf. 
Strandwolf comes from South African Dutch and means beach wolf. Historically, the brown hyena was placed in the same genus as its close relative, the striped hyena. Some scientists argued that it was too different, however, so it was moved to its own genus in the 1970s. This has since been supported by molecular analyses. Brown hyenas are easily distinguished from other hyena species by their long, shaggy brown coat. They also have pointed ears and a short tail, and a distinctive cream-coloured ruff around their neck. They are scavengers that feed from carcasses killed by larger predators, a feeding strategy that makes them kleptoparasites. Klepto meaning to steal, and parasites because they take from other animals. Kleptoparasitism is a more common feeding strategy among arthropods, but birds like skua, along with hyenas and lions, are all good examples of it. Some other animals will do it opportunistically when they get the chance, but it is not the primary feeding strategy for them. Brown hyenas have powerful jaws, and young hyenas can crack the leg bones of a springbok in 5 minutes, but this ability deteriorates with age and as their teeth wear down. They use these strong jaws to crack open bones to get access to the marrow. They will supplement this diet with insects, bird eggs, and even fruit. The social structure of brown hyenas is comparable to wolves, with a mated pair and their immediate offspring forming a small clan, with usually 4-6 to six members in the group. Clans will defend their territory, which is marked with a black and white paste excreted from their anal gland. All members cooperate in raising cubs. Males can improve their rank within the clan by killing a higher ranked male, while the alpha female is generally just the oldest female in the clan. Once they mature, the young males will often join other clans. Brown hyenas do not have a set mating season. Females can breed multiple times per year, and typically mature when they are two years old. Since clans are usually comprised of family members, males and females in the same clan do not typically mate with each other. Instead, females will mate with nomadic males that are not associated with any clan. Males in the clan show no resistance to this behaviour and will still help in raising the female's cubs. Usually only the dominant female breeds, but if two litters are born in the same clan, then the mothers will nurse any of the resulting cubs, although she will have a preference for nursing her own. Brown hyenas are the rarest of the extant hyena species. They are considered near threatened by the IUCN, and it is estimated that there is between 4,000 to 10,000 left in the wild. They are found in southern Africa, including South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Their largest remaining population is in the southern Kalahari Desert. Unlike the other hyena species, the main threat to the brown hyena is human persecution, as farmers will kill them due to their mistaken belief that they attack livestock. The last of the living hyena species is the striped hyena, Hyena hyena. It is most closely related to the brown hyena, although it is in a separate genus. It is the smallest of the bone-cracking hyenas, and retains many features similar to its favorite ancestors, such as having a smaller skull and more angular muzzle. It is found in northern Africa and throughout the Middle East into southern Asia. It is found as far south as Tanzania, all of West Africa, and into India and Pakistan. Despite covering a large area, its modern-day distribution is mostly patchy, with population strongholds in Tanzania, Kenya, Ethiopia, and India. Striped hyenas live in semi-deserts, rocky scrubland and savannas. Striped hyenas will drink water every night if they can find it, and need more water than other carnivores due to their diet, so will avoid true deserts. Interestingly, they can drink either fresh or salt water to sustain themselves. Like its closest relative, the striped hyena is primarily a scavenger, although they are more likely to attack and eat animals that they are confident they can overpower. They are not a fussy eater, being willing to eat carcasses in various stages of decomposition, and consuming bones, cartilage, ligaments and marrow. They usually crush bones with their jaws and swallow the ground particles, but will occasionally swallow bones whole. One quirk of their diet is that they avoid consuming vultures. Most predators avoid vultures, to be fair, but it seems unusual in this instance, as the striped hyena is also a scavenger. Its exact diet will depend on its locality, but it will also eat insects and fruit when they are plentiful. They are nocturnal animals, generally living alone or in pairs. Unlike the other hyena species, they are not particularly territorial, with home ranges of different animals often overlapping. They use their manes to signal other hyenas, and when fighting will bite the throat or legs, but will avoid biting the mane. They are monogamous, and the pair will each help with raising their cubs. In the wild, they live to around 12 years old, but can live up to 23 years in captivity. Striped hyenas have a rather turbulent history with humans. They were hunted by the ancient Egyptians, as they were considered a threat to livestock. The Egyptians would also fatten up captive hyenas for meat, and would sometimes even tame them for use in hunting. Taming striped hyenas is actually quite possible, particularly when they are young. They can become as affectionate as a well-trained dog, although they emit a strong odour that bathing cannot remove. In contrast, Algerian hunters and British sportsmen both considered hyenas too cowardly to make them worth hunting. While they are very capable of killing a dog with a single bite, they are more likely to feign death when escape is impossible, and they will maintain this ruse even after they have been severely bitten. 
All hyenas have been the source of superstitions over human history, with the possible exception of the insectivorous aardwolf. However, the striped hyena probably got the worst reputation of all. They have been considered grave robbers, which at least makes some sense given their diet, but they have also been accused of being steeds of witches and casting black magic. The Greeks believed that if the bodies of werewolves weren't destroyed, they would haunt battlefields as vampiric hyenas. People in the Arabian Peninsula and the Horn of Africa also considered hyenas vampiric. In the Middle East, hyenas were believed to be the physical manifestation of jinn, which you might be more familiar with the anglicised version, the genie. While these were not considered evil, they were still something to be feared. If you have been keeping track, this means that striped hyenas have been considered vampires, werewolves, witches and genies by various cultures. Not all saw them as a bad thing, however. While still feared, cultures in Afghanistan, India and Palestine, as well as ancient Greece and Rome, also associated them with love and fertility, which led to their body parts being used in traditional medicines. So that's kind of a win for them, I guess. Hyenas may have had a bad reputation, but this is undeserved given the important role they have in African ecosystems. The species that are scavengers clean up the landscape of carcasses, consuming their flesh and even their bones, playing a vital role in the African savannas and shrublands. The four remaining hyena species are highly diverse, with a large variety of diets, social structures and distributions. They are the remainder of a once large and diverse family, and have all evolved a lot from their cat-like ancestors, become the predators and scavengers that they are today. Thank you for listening, and feel free to suggest another group of animals you want to see me cover in the comments, and I will see you next time.